Now here's just a picture I pulled from a book, and it shows a bunch of different compounds. Well, do you remember the definition of compounds? Okay. Well, it has to be two or more elements, right? Let's go back to this page. Oops, wrong page. It's got to be two or more elements, right? So I just noticed up here that I'm kind of, kind of messing up because look at this. Would you say that's a compound? It's not, is it? All right, that's a molecule. All right. So here's a, just a representation of a number of different compounds. There's water. Here's a hydrogen. Whoa. Pretend I didn't do that. Right. Here's an oxygen. Here's a hydrogen. Hydrogen is represented as white in all these. Carbon is in black. Here's carbon dioxide. Right. Here's ethanol. This is the alcohol in alcoholic beverages. So again, these are hydrogen. Carbons, black, oxygens, there. But they're just compounds. There are two or more elements bonded together. And the reason I put this page up here is because you're going to start seeing as we uh, increase our vocabulary of chemistry and start to, to do a little bit of chemistry, you're going to start to see formulas. And all that does is show you what elements uh, and how many are in a compound. I've already written a couple. Oops. I've written water, H2O. That shows you it's a hydrogen. This little guy right here, that's a subscript that says there's two hydrogens. If I was going to write the formula up here for ethanol, right, it's C2. Notice the two carbons, right, the one right there and one right there. H. And then there's one, two, three, four. You can't see the other one on the other side. Uh, H5. Uh, and then there's this group right here, which is, we call an OH, which is, an oxygen and a hydrogen. Now, I could definitely have written C2H6O, but uh, that's just a typical way that alcohols are written. All right. So uh, here's ethylene glycol, uh, two carbons, right? So I write C2. And then one, two, three, four. There's another one back there, five, six. Um, I could go H5. No, I, I actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go H6, and then I'm going to go O2. That's a better way to represent that. All right? So there you go. Formulas just show how many elements and, and um, which ones are in the compound. All right? So far, so good. Let's move on to the last way that we typically find matter, and that is as mixtures. All right? Now, I'm sure you know what a mixture is. It's a couple things mixed together. You've maybe seen uh, different mixtures of rocks or dirt or leaves or whatever. All right, A mixture is a pretty straightforward thing. It's matter that is not chemically joined. All right? In other words, there's no bond that's holding those atoms together. I could have a big, um, let's just say I had a, I had a, a large bowl, right? And in it I had some gold and silver oops, and some copper a lot of metals there right and I'm mixing around mixing around well when I'm all done and I reach in to pick something up I'm gonna get some of that metal that's a mixture of metals and it's a mixture of some expensive metals however it's not um, any kind of bonded thing it's not any kind of compound or molecule Right, and probably the easiest example I, that I'm trying to make here is if any of you have a change jar at home, that is a mixture of metals. All right, now we take mixtures, which happen to be a bunch of different things, uh, not chemically joined, and we kind of uh, put them into two different categories: those that look the same throughout, and those that do not look the same throughout. If you were to look down here, here's one that is actually a mixture. And it's something I like a lot. It's milk. But there's a whole bunch of things in milk. There's some water. Um, there's, let's see, uh, lactose. Um, there's fat. There's all sorts of things in there. Um, and, it, and it's not chemically bonded, all right? Milk is not this one compound. It's a mixture of things. But as you know, it's the same throughout. Now, here's another thing that I like a lot too, unfortunately, and that's soda pop, all right? What's in there? Well, of course, there's water, there's caffeine, right? There is um, uh, color, some sugar, right? There's all sorts of things in there. But the important thing is, no matter where you look in that whole milk, 
it looks exactly the same throughout. All right, the whole thing is the same throughout. Well, when we have a, a thing that's made up of parts and it's the same throughout, that's called a homogeneous mixture, or maybe a better way to say is homogeneous. Okay, and so that's the kind you see where you can't find any little parts. And uh, another er everyday example of a homogeneous mixture is air. And it's a good thing that it's a, it's a homogeneous mixture. Can you imagine walking down the street and then all of a sudden you'd run into a pocket of air that's mostly nitrogen and you can't breathe? So then you have to run around until you find a pocket of oxygen? It would be bad, all right? So uh, air is another, um, oops, air is another example of a homogeneous mixture, all right? Now then we have these other kind. We have a Caesar salad. Look at this thing. I've got some tomatoes. I've got some little nuts in here. I've got little pieces of Parmesan. I've got some romaine lettuce. Okay, It's definitely a mixture. But the important thing is, is if I have a bite of salad right here, I don't get the same as if I had a bite of salad over here. And I don't get the same if I had a bite of salad over here. In other words, I'm going to bite into the salad, and it's going to be different depending on the part of the salad. Let's look at, uh, at a, a more yummy example. Let's look at a brownie. All right. Now brownies the same way. Look at this. Look at this big clump of nuts right there. So if I bite on that corner, I get a lot of nuts. If I bite in this one, only one. And it's my personal opinion, by the way. There's there's no better way to ruin a brownie than to put a bunch of nuts in there. Okay. Reminds me of this this Jello that my grandma used to make. She'd make this Jello, and in it she would put some cherries, and she'd put some grapes. Um, and she put some blueberries in it, and uh, although I ate it, I didn't like it. When I eat Jello, I want to eat. I want to take a bite right here. I want just Jello. I don't want a cherry or a grape or a blueberry in my Jello. But that's just me. If you like that stuff, I'm not trying to offend you. So here's our definition of a, a heterogeneous mixture. It's mixtures with different regions. No matter where you go, you're not going to necessarily find exactly the same part, right? So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Let's see what I have here. I kind of forgot. Oh, ooh, this is an important thing right here. Now, the cool thing about mixtures is you can separate them through physical means, right? One of the things that some friends and I used to do, we used to take a magnet, and we used to put it into some dirt, and we pull it out, and when we pull it out, on this magnet were all these little bitty pieces of iron filings on it. Okay, we used to get the iron out of dirt. Okay, that's because dirt is a homogeneous mixture, and I could actually separate the iron from the dirt physically. In other words, I haven't changed anything. Um, if I wanted to separate this mixture right here, well, with my fingers I can just actually pull out the pieces. If I want to separate some of those uh, compounds. From the milk, however, I'm going to need to use other means, whether it's distillation or filtration or evaporation. Um, but but you can get the stuff out of there. All right? So this seems like a big, big, big pile of stuff, right? Trying to keep all these things uh, together. Well, I've got a little diagram that hopefully will kind of show you how it's all related. And I understand it could be confusing, but just bear with me. As you spend some time going over this, it'll make a little more sense. First of all, hopefully you know that it's all matter, right? Anything that has mass and takes up space. Now, if I look at my matter, doesn't matter what piece I give you, does it look the same? Well, if it doesn't, then we've got a, uh, a heterogeneous mix mixture. Okay, so for example, maybe I've, I've picked up a big scoop of dirt, and I've got a piece of leaf, I've got rock, I've got some what looks like dirt, maybe some bug parts. That's a heterogeneous mixture. Okay, but let's say that this piece of matter I just randomly grabbed does look the same throughout. Okay, so now we know that the matter is homogeneous, but we don't know if it's a compound or if it's a mixture. Okay, so we look to our next thing. It doesn't have a variable composition. What in the world? Well, remember, that was that was our stuff way back here with, uh, you know, having the definite composition, right? Okay. Well, if it has a, a composition that's variable, what I mean by that, let's say we do have our um, soda. 
in, in, in our soda, there are all these different things among others. Okay, there's also carbonic acid and phosphoric acid. And so it has a variable composition. So if it does, then we've got our homogeneous mixture. But now if it doesn't, let's say I've got this white powder. All right, and this white powder, by the way, happens to be sugar. All right, it's matter. It's uniform throughout. Okay, it has a variable composition. Nope, every piece of sugar is just like the next piece of sugar. So that takes me to the fact that it's a pure substance. Remember I said pure substance was kind of like an all-encompassing part, right? So let us move on now, because we can take pure substance and kind of separate them into two other categories. Can I take sugar, which here's the formula, C6H12O6, can I break it into simpler substances? Well, can you? You sure can. Can I break it into carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen? Since you can, I had a compound. If, for example, my, my powder was sulfur, just the element sulfur, S8, okay, and it was a yellow powder, okay, you can't break that down into anything else, and so I had an element. All right. Hopefully that makes a little sense. I don't know. I know. I know it seems confusing, but uh, we'll spend some time on it trying to get these all uh, in your brain. What I want you to do right now is look at this exercise and see if you can kind of separate them for me. Okay, I've got all these different things, and why it starts at uh, 20 is just because I probably cut and pasted this from something. But let's look at this. I want you to label whether something's a pure substance, right? A heterogeneous mixture or a homogeneous mixture. Now remember, pure substance means an element or a compound. Okay, and if you look at the definitions before, you'll uh, see what those are. Okay, So pause the video, try this out, and then uh, I know this video is getting long, so I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. All right, how'd you do? Well, this is a pure substance, okay, because it's gold. It's a pure substance, it's an element. Orange juice, well, I'm going to call that a homogeneous mixture, all right? You could say, well, it's got pulp in it, and if it is orange juice with pulp and it's settled, then it definitely would be a heterogeneous mixture. Stainless steel, all right? Well, stainless steel uh, is mostly carbon um, along with uh, maybe some chromium, and I'm not sure what some of the other elements are there, but that's actually a mixture, all right? But it looks the same throughout, so that's a homogeneous mixture. Okay, this thing, now you don't know what that is, but it, it looks like a bunch of elements all bonded together, right? So that must be some kind of compound. So that's a pure substance. Carbonated beverage, homogeneous mixture. Raisin bran, whoa, hetero, right? Gasoline, well, it's a pure substance. Although I'm sure some... Well, I don't know if I should, well, it's, it's actually, I'll tell you what, if you said pure substance or homogeneous mixture, either one's fine, okay? This thing, I don't know, it must be some kind of compound, right? Two or more elements bonded together, so that's a pure substance. Sugar, pure substance. This thing, so it happens to be acetylene, pure substance. And a chocolate chip cookie, well, if I bite into a cookie and I get one chip, uh, the next chip might not have any, or it might have five. So that is a hetero. All right. Okay, hopefully some of this made sense. We'll go over it. We'll do some labs and try and get these concepts in your brain. And if you have any questions, please bring them up in class. And uh, I'll see you then.